Welcome to the Meditation Realm Planeswalkers. I'm Caleb, your guide through these blind eternities. And in today's video, we're going to be looking over the new holiday playmat that Wizards put out, and then the prizes that I got from the Ixalan pre release. Kind of go over my experience with that. But look at this gorgeous map here. It's kind of hard to see with the camera, but it is one of the new foiling style. So it's uh, not as foily as I feel like the other mats were, but it is. Let me zoom in here a little bit. You guys can kind of see a little bit more. Uh, it's got Santa's getting raided by a bunch of dragons. Christmas Grinchy dragons. Eating poor Sir Gingers and stealing some stuff. So if you don't get any packages this year, you can blame the, the dragon Grinches that stole Christmas. Uh... If you got to play in the Ixalan pre-release, let me know in the comments how you did, what you played. I got to play myself at my local disc, shop, disc Heroes card shop, uh, one of the best game stores in Portland, Oregon. If you can swing by, you definitely should. Happened to do pretty well. I got first place in the second event I played. Uh, played Two-Headed Giant, and then I played Regular Sealed. Uh, Two-Headed Giant went 2v2. Uh, and then for 1v1, managed to get first place, got myself a good chunk of credit and some cards, and a new Dragon Lord Atarka in that OG frame. I really love that OG frame that they're doing with cards. So many sweet new cards. Uh, glad to let it do them. Pre-releases are giving out random ones as well. Uh, we're going to go over my packs that we got in my pre-release prize pack. Uh, Pre-release, I got to play Black Green. This format seems a lot slower than before. You're not necessarily having to worry so much about one and two and three drops blowing out the game. Our first rare here is a foil, Echoing Depths. And then, hey, we got a Mythic. We got the Planeswalker, Quintorius Canned, and uncommon uh, a lot of powerful cards in this set you know even in the common and uncommon slot uh, there are some big creatures that really just kind of take away the game uh, the, the set is very bomb heavy it's real easy to just carry away with a couple big four four five and six drop creatures uh, removal is very important in that same regard I felt like black was the strongest color again because uh, if you could remove the big bombs and keep something out it was hard for your opponents to be able to keep up with you Ooh, we got a list slot here. We got the Empyrean Eagle. Not very good. Foil Common. Soul of the Lost for a rare. And then a Special Art of the Rampaging Serodos. So that's uncommon. All right, now we're on to the comments. Um, definitely a format that rewards kind of building better synergy and not necessarily going for the aggro. Um, I see, saw a few people who played aggressive, and depending on your format, obviously red-green is definitely meant to curve out and just play aggressive creatures, uh, but I think most of the other style of decks, you can afford to go a little bit slower. Uh, definitely a more fun environment in that way. I don't know about playing more than two colors, like, you know, if you can play Gith Gishath, uh, you know, go for it, but it's definitely kind of harder to do. I like this art style. So we got Nizit. Nikanzil, Current of Conduction, and it's Foil Special Arts, that's only uncommon. Hey, we got another Mythic, we got Aklazot's Deepest Betrayal, the Bat God. I am the Bat God. Uh, and then we got a list card from the Commander deck, oh, I guess it's one of the Commanders, a Contest of Claws. And then, uncommon. Alright, so cool, two Mythics so far. Um... Tell me what you guys' thoughts are on the lands. I know in the collector packs, they, they're double-sided with the uh, Jurassic Park lands from before and after. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of this style of the island, you know, lands in general. Um, it's unique. I will definitely give that as unique, but I can't say it's my favorite version of art style. Not that it's bad, it's just not that it's my favorite. And then we've got... Ooh, this guy, he did work for me in the pre-release. Uh, it was actually pretty easy to get to send four with how many cards milled and had other effects that just easily sacrificed themselves or just cr tr creatures trading in combat. It was real easy to have this be a 5-5 five, five trample for three mana, and that's pretty big. Our rare here is Warden of the Inner Sky. I saw this guy do a lot of work for people because it's real easy to poop out a lot of artifacts so you just get you know a treasure and see you know, another you know, treasure and uh a map token and you tap this guy and then boom he's got counters you got counters to be able to put away all day and then oh, only one rare in that one okay 
And uh, joys of list packs, you definitely can, or set boosters, you can get some good stuff, and sometimes it's just normal. I'm definitely curious to see, once we get to the play boosters, how those are going to be. It's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting change, opening those up for the channel. Tell me what you guys think. If you're looking forward to having just one style of booster to look forward to again, or if it's uh, if you liked having to choose between draft and set boosters, I think it's kind of a wise idea overall because most people went towards set boosters because it's just better value, and then nobody was drafting, so draft wasn't worth picking up draft boxes, um, and then draft format itself just kind of faltered out the last couple years with standard. So we'll see if play boosters better better pull people back in. A foil uncommon. We got a rare, a deep root pilgrimage. And alright, commons and uncommons. Nothing too too fancy there. Um, this set definitely has a lot of powerful cards for commander. Again, as always, as you can see sets have a lot of strong ones. Um, all the gods, a lot of these cards that flip into other you know, flip into lands are gonna see a lot of play. Hey, we got another mythic here, and this guy's gonna see a lot of play. The Blood Letter of Aklazos. A 4-drop 2-4 flyer. If an opponent would lose life during your turn, they lose twice that much life instead. So just like generic combat becomes huge. Uh, other effects that make your opponents lose life or take damage, just it doubles. And only at 4. This guy is amazing. Absolutely very strong. I see him playing you know, in the constructed formats and definitely in Commander. Absolutely going to see playing Commander. And then, hey, some of those sweet lands. I like that we got more man lands that are playable. And then commons and uncommons again. Uh, this set does have a good chunk of, you know, some playable commons and uncommons. Um, you know, it just really depends on the type of deck that uh, you're playing. Some of them definitely fit some niche strategies. The craft mechanic definitely gives some extra value to a lot of cards. More playability, more value. Value is good, I heard. Hey, we're hitting all the mythics here. We got Hwatli, the Poet of Unity. She's gone from Planeswalker to just regular creature. She lost her spark post-war, like we're going to see with a lot of uh, Planeswalkers. And she's going to transform. I don't know how I feel about her transformation, because, yeah, it's a saga. You create two dinos. Uh, second one is gives your creatures mana. They turn your creatures into mana dorks. Uh, the third one, you search your library for a dinosaur, reveal it, put it into your hand. And the fourth is dinosaur you control, gain double strike and trample. So, you basically help make a bunch of dinosaurs so you can make more dinosaurs? Hmm. She's okay. I mean, she's definitely a better version of, like, a Borderland Ranger, which, you know, used to see play. That was a valued green creature back in the day. And it's definitely an upgrade from that. So, probably see play in standard. I don't know about, uh, you know other constructed formats this guy talk about an upgrade on commons four or five reach trample for four mana at common is a huge or uncommon is a huge power upgrade uh just absolutely huge it's one of those things where you just keep seeing every year in a limited environment and standard the power creep is real no more watch wolves anymore guys at least uh you do but they're not worth playing <laughs> Uh, jeez. All right, we got another land here. We got the Restless Anchorage. Uh, again, these lands were great in the sealed environment. They're going to see play in Commander and Standard and Limited. And we got, speaking of Commander, we got a Commander card. We've got Carterman, the cool Sky Marcher. And all right. And so five Mythics so far, doing pretty good. Uh, no, no special cards yet, but, you know, hey. Still an opportunity to hit something sweet. We will definitely see. I'm looking forward to opening up a set booster box of this and seeing if I get lucky with that. Preacher of the Schism. This guy was the MVP for me during the my sealed. He is such a powerhouse. 2-4 Death Touch for 3. It's already good stat line. Both of those effects are super relevant on attacking. Uh, if you're neutral with your opponent, you get both of them at the same time. And then just it just scales. Like if you're ahead, you're drawing cards. If you're behind, you're making tokens to block and gain life. Like this guy did work for me all night. I definitely highly recommend if you play draft that this is probably a top pick. Easily. Uh, might be the best limited card. Ooh, foil forest. Again, the art style is, is definitely unique. 
I will give that it is unique. And then last but not least for my packs here, we have, oh, I, uh, I can't remember what we called this art style for this Mesoamerican, you know, Aztecian style, but this is just beautiful artwork on the cards. I am so happy to see this artwork recognized. And then our last one, oh, last but not least, we hit the best card in the set. We hit a Cavern of Souls. Hey, yeah, guys. That's how you go out right there, folks. Man, just so many mythics in that one. How many did we get overall? Three, six. We got six mythics out of all those packs. Nice. Uh, and Cavern of Souls to end it out. Some good hits, some great playable cards. Thank you for joining me, Planeswalkers. Always glad to have you here. Like, share, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you here on the next video.